Hi everyone, welcome to Seafood Ninja South. We are so excited for this interview with Cassin Trenner. He's an author, speaker, ocean activist who was awarded the title Hero of the Environment by Time Magazine in recognition of his work. Cassin has spent the last 15 years working on environmental campaigns. He believes that both environmental organizations and leading corporate actors can create the change we need to preserve and rebuild our ailing planet. He has authored two books and has delivered dozens of keynotes and presentations in multiple countries, including a 2012 TED Talk. His work has been showcased in numerous documentary films, books, and journals around the world. We hope you enjoy this interview. Hi, welcome to our podcast. We're so excited to interview Cassin Tenner. He is a book author, ocean activist, and we are so excited that he shared with us his wonderful book called Umiju. I hope I said it right. Perfect. And um, Luna over here had the chance to read this amazing book, and we just have some great questions for you. And hopefully, you have some questions for her, and I think we can get started. So, Ms. Luna, can you tell us what's your first question? Well, my first question is well, I just want to share how. How I like, what was my favorite part? Oh, yes? Yeah. Okay, we're going to jump right to that. What's your I favorite part? <laughs> my favorite part is was when Umiju went into the ocean to find the meaning of love. Very nice. And what, what was it? Did she find it? Yes. In what form? Can you share a little bit more about it? I need to think more. You need to think more? Think more. Well, I don't think we want to spoil the ending. So maybe we just want to mention that Umiju went into the ocean to find the meaning of love. And in that adventure, she got to do what? She got to meet different types of fish, like an octopus, a turtle, I believe, and an apler fish. Oh, very nice. And do you think she had like a really fun adventure and found all the answers that she had about love? Okay, great. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, well, I have some questions. Like, for example, why do you choose to call this book Meet You? Oh, man, I I almost don't want to talk at all. I just want <laughs> you two to keep talking. <laughs> the movie's amazing. Um, but I will answer your question after I say thank you, Miss Luna, for your amazing feedback. It's wonderful to hear that kind of thing. And for taking the time to read the book. It means a lot to me. I wrote it for you. So I'm glad that, uh, that it meant something to you. Um, I called the book Umiju because I wanted to, I wanted the main character to be um, a, a girl that wasn't from any one place. I wanted to, to give her a name that combined sounds from different countries and different cultures in a way that that would, would sort of bring things together. And uh, there's a little island in southern Japan where they have an expression, ubinchu, which means basically ocean person. It's about halfway between fisherman and mermaid. And uh, I tried to imagine what it would be like if, you know, a nine or 10 year old person tried to say that without any understanding of Japanese. So I try to use the Japanese term, but give it to somebody else for pronunciation. And I got Umiju from that. Okay. So it's like half in between fisherman and mermaid. So you love mermaid. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty Somewhere cool. in there. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Very cool. Um, you'd mentioned that you liked something about the book, about how it was written. Do you want to share that? Oh, yeah. I just... Well, I'm learning about poems in, in school. And I loved how you used oh. the rhyming words. And when I read the book, I found many words that rhymed with Umiju, like blue and blue. Very nice. Was that intentional? Oh, yeah. One of the reasons that I picked that name was because it was easy to rhyme. <laughs> it was... <laughs> <laughs> It's a long book, as you found out, and 
having the whole thing in a rhyming verse, it was hard sometimes to think about how I wanted to say what I wanted to say and then make it rhyme. So having a name that made that easier was really helpful. Yes, and clearly our seven-year-old host over here picked up on that, so that's yeah. really awesome. I'm so Great. glad that you're learning about poetry and that you're interested in poetry. It's, it can be such a beautiful way to communicate. You get yes, to use words does. in a whole new way. It sure does. And I think most importantly also, it's um, not most importantly, but in addition to the beautiful written book and the words, I think the illustrations, you know, and all, you know, the, the people listening to a podcast can really see the illustrations, but it's very, very vibrant and colorful. And I think it really captures, I think in so many ways, um, our oceans, like the, the life below. So I think, um, is there, would you want to share how you matched up with an illustrator, oh, yeah. the story behind that? Absolutely. I was very, very blessed uh, in, the, in the creation of this book because I got to work with my favorite artist was really quite something. I, um, so the woman who illustrated the book, her name is Kaya Koopman. She's a pop surrealist painter. And I had always been a fan of her art. And um, through sort of parallel channels, I became aware that she was like me. She was really interested in ocean conservation activism. And so after I wrote the book, I approached her and asked if she would want to do the illustration piece. And she said, yes. So over the, the months and years that followed that, um, she storyboarded out the book with me and then she painted the entire thing. The whole book is hand painted acrylic on wood. It was a massive project. And I'm so glad you like it because she worked so hard. That is really fantastic. Wow. So did you understand that it was hand painted acrylic on the book. wood? The whole book. Whole book. Wow. If you look closely at the pictures, you can see the wood behind them. Oh, wow. Yes. The whole book is painted on wood. Ugh. That is amazing. So it was literally like labor of love. <laughs> it was labor of something. <laughs> was, How many hours yeah. did it take? Not just to write the book per se, but also in addition to the art piece. Umiju took six years. It took me a year to write it. And then... Um, to build out the, the first version of the storyboard and the second version where I paired up with Kaya. And then there was about two, a little more than two years to paint it. And then a good portion of the last year to design it and print it. It was from 2013 to 2019. There she is. Wow. It's like, a, I feel like, you know, it's like a giving birth operation, except it took oh, six years. <laughs> I think it might be the closest I ever get to get. Yeah, it was just to give him birth. Your gestation period. Wow, <laughs> no, that's great. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions for for Miss Luna over here about her perspective? So many. Oh so my god! Many please questions. shoot, share. Yeah. Um. Do you have? Can tell me what your favorite book is? Well, I might think I might be thinking that this is number one. I love oh, it so much. That's very sweet. That's very sweet. That melts my heart. But aside from Umiju, before you knew about it, what was your favorite book? Like the Magic Treehouse series. Okay. Why did you like it? Why do you like it? Because, because when the two characters went on amazing adventures through time, it was amazing. I love traveling through time. And, yeah. Do you feel like it taught you things? There was no talking objects. Talk, talk, oh, talk. Did you learn something from Did it? you learn from it? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> from I think the it's, thing? it's hard sometimes to write a book that is both fun to read and that has a message, you know, that's meant to teach something. And I've always wondered with Umiju if, if I got the balance right. And some people think that it's too preachy, you know, that it's too that it's not fun enough, that it's too much about its message. But did you think it was fun? Did you enjoy that part of it? Or yeah. What do you think? I'm, yeah, I enjoyed everything. 
Um, so. Everything in life. So, um, do you, and I guess like the, the word preachy, do you understand what preachy means? I do not understand it because I've never uh, talked about it in school. Um, the word preachy is more of like um, slang to talk about maybe the message is a little too serious and, yeah. and, and too sort of like trying to drill it down on people and not as lighthearted as the book, you know, right. to be. Like so, more focused on the moral and the value than actually on the story and the enjoyment of the experience of reading. This is a this is a place that I've you know I'm I'm an ocean conservation activist. Uh, that's my career. That's what I've I've done for a long time, and I know that one of the areas that I struggle sometimes is I get too preachy. I focus on them like oh you have to do it this way, you to, and you turn people off like that. So let me do. I really tried to dial that back. And I tried to make it fun and beautiful first. So, yeah, I guess that's what, I just want to make sure that works. It's I think, hard. honestly, oh. it's, it's, a, it's a hard balance. And, you know, I oh. read the book, you know, obviously, um, to prepare for this interview. And, and coming from that conservation background, there was, like, this really fine line, right, mm -hmm. about, you know, not saying that trawling is bad or, right. or these fishing methods are bad, or but sharing, like, it's, it's bad only if the balance it's destroyed if there's no there's no balance if you're taking more than than that you the, the oceans can bear so i think you did really well on on finding that balance i didn't find it preachy at all um and and from what she shared with me after the the reading which i wish she would like talk about it a little bit more <laughs> about you know what what when she found love right what was that love for well she, in order to breathe in the ocean, her dad actually gave her a breathing stone. Okay. And she, and she got the idea of going into the ocean to find love because of food, seafood. Oh, seafood. Okay. Her, so when she her found... Her dad was cooking seafood. Okay. So when she found the ocean, when she was in the ocean looking for these answers, what was it that she learned from the different fishes and octopus that she talked to? What is the love about? I'm putting in the spot, I know. I forgot. Yeah, I know, forgot. Okay, well, we'll cut that piece. Um, it has to do more with, and you, and you mentioned this, Luna, when we were talking about it before, is that sort of the love of our oceans and our seafood and the balance right for our planet so she did say that before you know our interview and got shy right now but um to answer your question about being preachy or being too serious i really feel like it's lighthearted enough for kids to read and and really have that message of why it's important to have a balance and, and not to like overdo fishing and and to appreciate where our seafood comes from. Because that's another thing I think was missing. Um, not from the story itself, but from her understanding, Miju's understanding of when she ate, you know, there's a story behind it. And and I think nowadays as as we move in the movement of sustainability, you know, people are becoming more aware about knowing where their seafood comes from and who is harvesting or producing the seafood. And I really think it helps to have a better appreciation for what we're putting on our on our bellies. Exactly. That that was the gateway that I was hoping that to tell the story. It was sort of a framing device to tell the story. Yeah. Great. Do you have any other questions? Um, Luna, <laughs> do you think it's the kind of thing that would be helpful in like your classroom or with other kids in your school? I'll tr I'll try sharing. I'll try okay. sharing the book. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm really it. glad you like it. It means a lot to me. That and I want to share something. Okay. Uh, on the side of the cover, I actually found out that it won a oh. book award. Yeah. And congratulations on that. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That was a big day for us when we won uh, the Nautilus. Thank you. That's great. Welcome.
Well, you know, um, since you're learning about poetry, this might be a really great book to share with your teacher and the class, mm -hmm. you know, and also to learn a little bit about our oceans in the process. So, so excited that, that we got the opportunity to read it. And thank you so much for sending it. Now you have a signed copy by a real mm -hmm. author. What? This is exciting and a, an award-winning author on top of that. So we're gonna put it on the on the shelf away from your little brother before he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, have a, a two um, a two-year-old that mm -hmm. our little Viking likes to get his hands on everything. So <laughs> we'll have to protect it. <laughs> but um, well, do you have any other questions or any comments that you'd like to share, Luna? I think I'm all. Out. You think, oh, well, great. Well, if you don't have any other questions or do you want to say something else about the book that you'd like to share with us, that would be great. I mean, I I have a lot. I don't usually, I've done so many interviews about the book and I've never actually done one with uh, the perfect target audience right there on the other side of the microphone. And I'm wondering why I haven't done this before. Um, is it's so easy now to just ask questions about about all these things, you know, I, I don't have children and I, I don't really know much about children. I wrote a children's book because it made sense in my mind, like that kids are so open to the emotional connection that we have with our planet, and with our ocean. And, and if I could help give them some information early in life about our relationships with these things that maybe they could be stronger than we've been in my generation, make, make better choices than we've made in my generation. So it made sense to me on, a, on an intellectual level to write a kid's book. But aside from that, I had no idea what I was doing the entire time. So it, it means a lot to get your feedback, like more than you know. So thank you. You're welcome. Well, um, I think that's one of the reasons why we also started this podcast, you know, thinking about how do we teach children, you know, how does she learns because of the work that I do. So I share a lot of what we do with her. But what about everybody else that doesn't have, you know, parents that are conservative, you know, in the conservation world or, you know, doing sustainable seafood. So this yeah. is really a great, um, a, it's a very beautifully written and beautiful book. And it's a great tool for any parent to just spark that conversation, you know, and, and you're right. Kids are so passionate about our oceans and, you know, we, mermaids and, and mm -hmm. fish, and we have movies about them. So why not talk about what it requires or what it takes to keep those oceans in balance? So, um, I think, um, in terms of, do you have any feedback? Like, is there something different that you would like to see? You know, are you planning to write another book? Um, I haven't said this on camera yet, but yes, I am. I am planning on writing another one. Uh, it's a, uh, it's another big task, and I'm just at the very beginning of it. But uh, with feedback and support like this, it makes me a lot more excited. Well, that sounds fantastic. And if I may suggest, you know, um, getting mom groups to provide feedback might might be helpful too. You know, see yeah, how a good idea. how do we talk to kids? You know, in a way that that is kind of um, stays with them. You know, but I think the the imagery and and the poetry, the the poem rhyming style really helps. You know, I was thinking about Dr. Seuss a little bit. You know, <laughs> sort of. Because you want things to rhyme so it stays with you, especially yeah. for younger children. So that was really nice. And I also want to share something else. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I love, I love protecting the ocean so much that I want to be a marine biologist. Oh. That's the most, mostly I. That's the career I wear as on career day. Oh, oh I'm so glad to hear that. We need. We need more people working on this, and I'm so glad. And when you're ready, I have lots of people to introduce you to. <laughs> Great. So it'll be a, a teamwork over here. All right. We'll introduce you to a bunch of kids that need to learn about the oceans. Perfect. <laughs> and then she, you'll, you can help her when she you know, becomes a marine biologist in her career. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, um, I couldn't think of something that would need more than that. We need more people working on the oceans. Thank you. 
Great. Well, thank you again for, for taking the time, for sending the book, for connecting um, with me in LinkedIn, which shows the power of, of social networking. Um, if you have any like other questions or anything else that you would like to talk about, please send us an email. We're happy to support you and, and the excellent work that you're doing to try to teach our our children about you know our oceans and, and the importance of protecting the oceans. So I look forward to connecting in the future and, and learning more about the new book that you're going to be working on. Yeah. And um, we're happy to share this book right with yeah. our our friends and family and our and everybody that would want to um, read something so interesting, you know, that it's so important for, for our oceans and for our planet. So thank you again. This has been fantastic. Thank you both so much for making this. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you everyone for listening in or watching us on YouTube. We hope that you enjoyed the book as much as we did. You can find it in Amazon. We have linked the book in the show notes. Hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the week.